Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show. Uh, singer, main man, Biff Byford from Saxon. What's going on, Biff? Hey, yeah, we're here uh, sort of self-distancing. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's quite quite easy if you live in the country. Yes. I'm sure it's a bit more difficult when you live in the city. Yeah? It but, is. Um, you know, this is how it goes. Yep. Hey. Exciting. Uh, solo album, School of Hard Knocks, released uh, February 21st on Silver Lining Music. Um, yeah. So we'll talk about the new album, we'll talk about Saxon, and then we'll talk about uh, COVID-19 a bit. Just kind of like, <laughs> you know, just to get the kids yeah. to stay home, right? Um, yeah, Definitely. What could you do on a solo album that you couldn't do on a Saxon album? Uh, well, I think one of the things is to sing about myself, really. You know, I don't sing about myself too much on the Saxon album. I mean, I'll sometimes say, you know, I'll sometimes do it from the first person, I, you know, me, I. But most of the time, it's, um, you know, it's not really about me, if you know what I'm saying. But so... Uh, and a lot of the songs are specific to me, like School of Hard Knocks, things like that, uh, Black and White, Me and You, you know, just things like that. And um, yeah, it just allowed me to, uh, it's more of a, it's like a musical story, really, of what mm -hmm. influences me, what styles of music I like. And that's, that album sort of uh, sums up the different styles of music that I like. Tell me about uh, the pit and the pendulum. What is the lyrical meaning behind that? Well, it's based on an Edgar Allan Poe book. Uh, he was like the uh, the master of uh, horror back in the day. He was like the he was like the horror Charles Dickens, I suppose. So he wrote these short stories uh, about horror, basically, and macabre and gothic, uh, you know, gothic novels. So yeah. Um, yeah, of course, Hammer made a film, Pit in the Pendulum, with Vincent Price. Uh, so, yeah, it's based on that, really. I mean, it, the book is set in the Spanish Inquisition. Okay. Uh, you know, in the, in the 15, 1500s. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a story about uh, a torture machine, but specifically from that period when uh, torturing seemed to be the thing. Jeez, yes. <laughs> um, uh, how about uh, Worlds Collide? You just... Overall, I mean, that's, a, that's a, oh, a sci-fi song. You know, it's a, it's based on a, um, you know, based loosely on. It's quite a big, uh, you know, that skew of sort of uh, alien invasions film came out within a sort of ten-year period, and uh, you know, it's sort of based loosely around that sort of thing. You know, aliens uh, finding a new planet and, uh, and going to war with us, and to see who survives. Basically, that's what the song's about. Uh, but musically, it's a bit more sort of, um, you know, harder metal uh, than uh, Saxon play, I think. What's your favourite song off the album and why? I don't really have one, to tell you the truth. I, I, I like them all. They're all, like I said, they're all um, it's an eclectic, uh, you know, uh, sort of mixture of songs. So um, I like them all, actually. I like every, something about every, every one of them. I don't really have a favourite, to tell you the truth. I mean, I mean, some things are just straight rock and roll, like, um, you know, School of Hard Knocks, Welcome to the Show, and then you go into the more, uh, you know, more classic metal thing, like, uh, you know, Pedal to the Metal and Hearts of Steel. So I, I don't really have a favorite, to tell you the truth. All right. Uh, yeah. You know. And, and if you were to do another soul album, would you explore different genres other than the ones you've already sort of like... I don't think so. I don't think so. I quite like... I mean, I cover a wide spectrum, you know, from folk music to to prog rock to, you know, uh, metal to rock and roll to ballads. So, you know, uh, I mean, the music ranges from sort of, you know, heavy to uh, to sort of, uh, you know, quite mainstreamy, I suppose, more like a Tom Petty, Brian Adams style as well. So it's a wide spectrum of style. So, yeah, I think I'll stay within that... Uh, wide sort of uh, genre choice sure, and it sure. is a wide thing you know what I mean yeah 
And, and, and let's just touch upon, you know, what's going on in your neck of the woods in regards to uh, the coronavirus. Are, are... Oh, we're all locked down here. The only, uh, the only shops that are open are uh, food shops and sort of chemists, you know, pharmacies mm -hmm. and the odd hardware store. Um, I mean, it's a bit ambiguous, the advice. It's not like, a, you know, some people are bending the rules and other people are applying, you know, applying the rules. But uh, I suppose it will take a few days, uh, you know, to sort out who's been, who's, who's sort of pushing the envelope and who's not. You know what I mean? Like there was a couple of sports shops said they were going to open and the government closed them down straight away because um, they can buy sports equipment online, obviously. So, um, yeah. I mean, you know, we're just basically, the only thing we're going out for here is shopping. I mean, everything's calmed down now. Um, I mean, you know, people spent, I think people spent something like £2 billion on panic buying everything. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So there was nothing in the shops for a long time. Uh, so we were living on sort of things that were in the freezer already. But we didn't panic buy. I mean, my wife went out this morning and all the shops were more or less fully stocked. You know, there was tons of toilet rolls in one of the... I don't know what it is with toilet Maybe people are boiling them and making a stew. <laughs> I don't know. It's with toilet rolls. I mean, you know, I can think of um, you know, a lot more things I would need on a desert island. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, well, there you go. That's yep. what people were buying. Pasta and toilet roll was the big British thing. And, and, and you know, I mean, how serious are you, are, are you taking this? I mean, is it something serious... That you oh, think it's really it's really fairly serious, you know. I mean, I live in the countryside. Uh, you know, people come here to uh, quite a lot the weekend. It was it was packed last weekend, uh, which is stupid. Uh, but there doesn't be anybody. It's all around. Just people are out biking and walking. You know, just in in twos. You can't go out in a group you know, unless it's your family. So, and the police are starting to. Um, I think as from today, the police have got new powers um, so they can stop and, um, you know, put people into isolation if, if they think they're ill or they can give them a fine. So, you know, I mean, the weather is absolutely gorgeous here. I don't know if you've been to England when the sun's shining, but it is an absolutely fantastic place. You know, it's so green and, you know, beautiful. So, you know, people, it's even worse for people in the cities because... I just want to go get away, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's terrible, terrible. I mean, so, so let me. I, I guess say the whole uh, yeah. will help kill it, but I, I don't know. Well, no. You know, the we'll biggest say. problem is getting the youth to stay put, like you know, in the homes, because they're used to going out and you know activities and meeting people. I mean. Well, what... yeah, this this is one of the problems. You know, the, there's a lot of videos on 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 TV of you know, them breaking up teenagers, you know, sat on the beach sunbathing or in the park smoking, you know. So and this is what they, you know, it's what teenagers do. Uh, sit in the park, have a smoke, talk to their friends, drink a beer, you know. I mean, obviously that has to stop. They can't do that anymore, so. So that's, that's it, really. I mean, it's, uh, it's absolutely crazy. All right, let, let's switch gears to more of a positive note. New Saxon album. I know that I talked to I talked to Doug Scarlett. He's telling me, you know, it's there's a lot of heavy stuff, fast stuff. I talked to Nigel, it was more groove oriented. What's your take on the direction of this new album? Uh, well, um, it's 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 heavy. It's heavy. I would say direction is is the same as uh, same as Thunderbolt and Battering Ram Sacrifice. You know, it's. It's heavy and it's quite British, you know. Uh, we like to retain that. I mean, me and Nivs wrote most of the songs again. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm still open, but now we're all on hold. I'm still open to writing more songs. So I think the boys are, uh, are working on, on songs. So, you know, if they come up with anything uh, really strong, then we might, we might uh, you know, re-record re some of the stuff, put some new, newer stuff back in again. Uh, that they've written, so but we'll see. You know, it's all a, it's all a. I mean, what I do, you know, I have a date, I have a start time when I want the boys to start writing, and um, you know, that's how we do albums. We'll say, right, let's start writing the album, and uh, you know, Nibs is just a fiend with it. You know, he just writes so many ideas down. Nibs, it's crazy. So, you know, I get ideas from all the boys, but predominantly most of them are from Nibs. Um, 
I don't know whether he's got a, maybe he's, he just goes in his cellar and hides away for 24 hours. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I mean, there's a few songs we've put together, uh, which are pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, it's heavy. There's some great, um, yeah, there's some great uh, guitar playing on it uh, from the boys, and uh, you know, Nigel's um, drumming again is is like it's up there with uh, you know much younger drummers, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Pushing himself quite hard with it. I mean, Nibs uh, is is going to play the bass remote. I've lent him my uh, Rickenbacker, 1974 Rickenbacker, so he's going to play bass on that uh, while he's at home because he's got a bit of a studio there. So, yeah, I mean, Andy Sneep is producing it. So, um, you know, we'll see how it goes, really. Do you have any songs actually done, completed, recorded, finished? No, there's nothing done completed. Okay. Obviously, um, you know, I had a heart attack, so that put me back a bit. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I've been uh, I've been really rehearsing my voice for the live shows we've just done and the one we were about to do at the end of March that got postponed till September. So, um, yeah, you know, there's plenty of time. The thing is, you can't rush these things. It's like writing a book. You have to just do a bit of work every day and see what comes, you know. What about uh, lyrical ideas? Are you looking around, reading some books, thinking of stuff? No, I've got some ideas. The lyrics are, you know, the lyrics are like 50% done, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I've got some good ideas. Um, you know, it, it, sometimes I change my ideas and rewrite the song completely. So it's just everything's open. You know what I mean? We don't, I don't close any book until, actually, we're still, we're, I'm still changing things when we record sometimes. So it's just an ever-moving thing. I think that's why our albums, people consider them to be, you know, quite on the edge and really entertaining because we don't, you know, we don't finish until the tapes are sent to, uh, you know, sent to the record company. So we're always writing and always changing and always looking for inspiration right up to the very last minute, you know. What kind of due date are you looking at? Like, when is it you want it to come out? Well, ideally? we wanted it to be early 21. But I don't know now. You know, we might uh, we might have to rethink that. I don't know. But, um, yeah, we'll see. You know, everything... I mean, with music, everything's up in the air, really. Yeah. How's your health, by the way? Is it... Uh, it's doing well. It's doing well, actually. Uh, you know, it's... Um, every day I've been out on my bike in the last three days. That's the first time I've been biking for sort of six months because that's how it all started with my heart biking that's when I first got the twinge so yeah it was a bit sort of um, you know biking was a bit of a wacky thing for me to do again but yeah <clears throat> I've been up the hills and down the dales a bit I've only, I'm only doing like four miles for now uh, but um, wow. that's you know, good. there's some big hills massive hills where I live okay. well, what happened like if you don't want to answer it's all good was a heart attack, yeah. Yeah. It, was a, it wasn't. It wasn't like a Hollywood heart attack, though. You know, it was like a. It was more like a felt like I got indigestion or something, and uh, you know there was a, a wacky rhythm. They found a wacky rhythm in my heart and sent me in. Uh, that's where it started, really. Did but they... I lived with it for like maybe three weeks before I sort of decided something was wrong. If you know what I mean. Was it like a, a bypass or a, a change of a valve? It was a triple bypass. Yeah. I mean, it was it was one bypass, but they just do all three when they're in there. Okay. It's a bit like a car service, you know what I mean? Yeah. My dad we just... We my, changed all the oil and the filters while we were in there. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm happy to hear you're, you're, you're feeling better, and, uh, and you know, uh, you got to be careful because the people with heart conditions or had, especially with COVID-19, it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's not good, right? It's an evil little bastard, is what it is, and yes. um, you know, we're going to have to try and um, get through it, aren't we? So, yeah. so nothing much to do really. Just stay with your family and only go out shopping or whatever. And you know, I feel sorry for people that haven't got gardens and things. You know, they're trapped in a flat or trapped in a sort of you know in a sort of really built-up environment. Yeah. Or they're living in a you know a place with all their family. You know, a lot of people live with their families especially in places like France and Italy and places like that, you know, so, you know, the whole family, you have to be careful. It's terrible. It's a terrible, terrible virus, definitely. Yeah. It's so, biblical, 
as they say. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so what plans to bridge the gap for Saxon right now? Just keep writing and just keep recording? Uh, well, I think, I mean, I might shoot a video. We're trying with the idea of shooting a video for Pitting the Pendulum, but obviously we'd have to shoot it remotely. You know, me here and, you know, Frederick, the guitarist in Sweden. But it can be done, you know, we can do it. Um, so we might think about doing that in the next couple of weeks. It's a little bit crazier at the moment because, you know, everybody with a cough or a slight runny nose, it, you know, everybody's getting like phantom illnesses and nobody's yeah. quite sure who's got it because they're not testing anybody uh, in England unless they're in hospital, unless they go to hospital and then they test them. And I think probably some people, they don't test them until they're actually dead. I don't know, but um, nobody knows how many people have it you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Same here. I, I don't suppose they can really test 59 million people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're a bit wacky, but, um, I mean, obviously you can pay for a test, which is like, I think they're charging your money, $600 for a test. Wow. Which is a lot of money, you know, so, you know. Yeah, well, you know, anyways. To it, you know. Yeah, School of Hard Knocks, everybody go pick it up in the meantime, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, distribution, uh, you know, the distribution uh, places, a lot of them are closed. Uh, but I th think you can buy it from Amazon and, uh, you know, a lot of other musical things. I mean, obviously, you can download it and you can stream it. Uh, you know, you can get it, definitely. So, yeah, I mean, the album's doing really well. I was really surprised. It's had some fantastic reviews. And people, um, you know, aren't bothered that I'm singing songs about my wife and things. They're, they seem to be really <laughs> into it. Uh, so... Um, there's no uh, no negativeness about it, but it is actually a proper solo album. It's not just a bunch of songs that you know didn't make the Saxon albums, if you know what I mean. No, no, I heard it and it's great. I love it. I think it's a great album and it bridges the gap too between Saxon uh, albums, right? It's good, yeah, yeah. I like it. You know, I mean, I didn't know if people would like it, but I like it. So I suppose when you make it, that's the only thing that matters. But yes. um, yeah, I was pulling. I was really surprised that it got uh, you know some. 10 star reviews and it sold so well i mean you know when they run out of vinyls they tried to make some more but they couldn't but i suppose when they all these things over we'll kick it in again really yeah so i just think keep po i'll keep podcasting on facebook and uh and twitter and um, you know the saxon sites and uh, just let people know what's happening saxon wise and what i'm doing Perfect. so i'll probably touch with people so yeah it was uh, great speaking with you. All the best, health, safe, safety for your family, and uh, you know, uh, hopefully, this will lessen. You we'll know, speak again on the other side. Yes, we will, my friend. All right, have yourself a wonderful day. Okay, see you too. Bye bye. Okay, bye.